I'm Ryan Carlson with Health Jump, and today we are here with Mark Karsh, who's the Chief Commercial Officer from DataVant. Mark, thank you so much for taking time to share a little bit about DataVant and what you're doing with health data. Ryan, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to speak with you here this morning. So tell me, what does DataVant do, and who is your primary customer? Sure. So at a very high level, DataVance mission is to connect the world's healthcare data to improve patient outcomes. So really, we drive a network business in that we are a neutral technology, a neutral token and connectivity platform that allows for all of the major constituent groups in the healthcare ecosystem to link uh, and share patient data on a de-identified and with our recent merger with Cyox, with consent, identified information across the healthcare ecosystem. So when you ask a question with respect to our customers, we work with everybody from data sources to analytics and platform partners to organizations like large life science companies, medical device companies, and of recent, with our merger with Cyox, we are now expanding into large provider groups and large payer groups. Let's talk about the real issue here, which is the problem that you guys solve in the industry. Why does DataVant exist? Sure. So, so DataVant exists primarily to share and exchange information in a neutral way. And to take a step back, if you look back five to seven years in the healthcare industry, you had a lot of large data providers and large analytic companies that all had their own way of de-identifying and linking and tokenizing their data. What that it led to was an environment that was very walled or fragmented in that if you were company A and company B was a competitive data company, you would not want to work with that other company and share um, technology or, or tokens across from one organization to the other. Enter DataVant, who at our core has three primary tenets of our approach to the marketplace. Number one, we have to be neutral. And by neutral, we mean we are not in the business of selling data or delivering analytics. So therefore, organizations across the network are comfortable in working with us as a neutral party. So number one, we have to be ubiquitous, which means we have to be everywhere in order for us to be able to connect disparate data sets. And today we enjoy partnerships with over 400 organizations across that continuum that I talked about earlier, which allows us to connect in a neutral fashion healthcare data. Lastly, and most importantly, we must be trusted. We're dealing at the end of the day with patient information. And so we have to hold ourselves to extremely high standards around compliance, governmental uh, regulations, and certainly here at DataVant, we take great pride in our ability to do that. When I hear about tokenization, it reminds me a lot of the early payment industry where you had a lot of credit card theft, credit card fraud, and a lot of it starts with just a server comes and takes your card and goes to the back and could copy that ticket or they would swipe the card through the little machine, right? When we were at the gas station and that machine would store all of that credit card information. And a lot of times it was a pre-authorization, right? They go out and check to see that you've got $80 before you can get that tank of gas. And tokenization was a way of disintermediating the information on that card and the information that was on the machine and the information that was stored out on servers. And so creating anonymized tokens allowed people to swipe your card and never actually have that information. It all went out in motion and it was never at rest. And my understanding is with health data, it's the similar problem. Not only is there people's privacy at risk, 
but then you've got data that's fragmented between silos, right? You've got your lab data, your claims data, your EMR data, and you can't tie them together without a unique identifier, right? And that's where that, you guys come in? That is correct. It's interesting, Ryan, that you would use the, the payment industry because there, that is very analogous to, to data advance approach to the marketplace. Uh, I would use Visa as an example. Mm-hmm. And, and Visa plays a very neutral and, and really thin technology layer in the exchange of, of goods and services. And, and really, Datavance mission is very similar to, to serve as a very neutral, thin layer, allowing for the exchange appropriately and compliantly in the area of patient information and patient data, and doing so in predominantly a majority of our business is in the de-identified world, but increasingly more and more, and one of the strategic elements of our merger with Ciox is our mission, as I, as I stated earlier, is to connect the world's healthcare data. A large portion of the healthcare data that's out there is identified information and sits behind the walls of, of hospitals and large institutions. And so with our mission, we are now with our merger with Ciox, when we have patient consent in the case of a clinical trial or a patient registry or any type of of, of clinical or insurance-based use case, we have the ability to go out and actually retrieve an individual's medical chart. So we've expanded our vision to not only include de-identified information, which operates, as you pointed out very eloquently, on a a de-identified token but we now also can add to that the ability where consent is delivered and applied, we can go and track individual information and return that for the purposes of good quality clinical research and and really answering a a lot of the big problems and big questions that we believe face not only the U.S., but the world. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, out of those 400 partners, I know HealthJump uses data vent to help people that have disparate pieces of data and they've made it a standard. And I think that's, what's really great. You know, when you say it's ubiquitous, I'd say that I've heard the term data vent is synonymous with, oh, that's how we, that's how we link things in a safe, secure and private manner. So I'd say mission accomplished. That's, that's an exciting milestone. So tell me what is the, what is it that uniquely qualifies Datavant to be moving forward? Is there a specific technology or special know-how that sets you apart from any other options on the market? First, I would say HealthJump has been a great partner and in a lot of ways shares a a, a common mission of, of pulling together fragmented data that might heretofore have been registered as unusable. It's software and technology that, that's out there integrating EHR, EMR, e-prescribing applications, uh, clinical applications. We believe that those areas really hold the future for good quality research in the healthcare world and can answer a lot of really, really big uh, questions that the U.S. is faced with here. So I, I would just echo your underpinning of the use of a neutral technology, a neutral token to bring together disparate or fragmented sets of data. As, as far as is us being unique, we like to think that the number one feature that we have that makes us very unique is our neutrality. And There's a number of companies out there that have their own token system. Almost every one of those, or I would say all of those, make a majority of their money either monetizing data or delivering analytics or consulting services on top of that token or using that token to further their data sales or their analytics, where our number one mission is to be neutral, like a visa, to use the analogy that we talked about earlier, where we don't care if Pfizer wants to buy data from data party A 
or data party B or data party C, we simply want to take the friction out of linking and connecting that data and doing so in a highly compliant manner when they're ready to do that. We believe that fundamentally the biggest questions that face our country and the world around healthcare can be solved through the linking of disparate data sets. I, I think, Ryan, we don't have to look too far in the past, and, and dare I say, we're still in the middle of, of the COVID pandemic, but the, the one thing that COVID did here in the U.S., I think that could be perceived as being positive is it made the U.S. and really other pockets of the world realize how fragmented the healthcare system is. When the U.S. government turned and tried to answer questions around the outbreak and where it was spreading and who it was affecting and who it was affecting more so than others. What was working to control the pandemic pre-vaccine? It was very, very hard to answer those questions due to the fragmentation of primarily the data systems and the pools of data, the data lakes, the EHR systems, the e-prescribing systems that were out there. And so data vant in, in a in a in a small and growing way is an answer to help solve those problems. And we're working very closely with the federal government to ensure that as other pandemics, if and certainly we hope they never hit, we will be in a better position collectively as a country to answer some of those questions. You bring up a very interesting pain point that we have in healthcare is that we've got the haves and the have nots, those that have data and those that need it, but can't get it, or it's not in a format that they can use it. And I see there's this interesting neutral territory where there is just friction in people creating value with data. And I see the first one is interoperability. People are stuck thinking about data at the application level, making systems talk to systems, whereas that's expensive, time consuming and fragmented. And then you look to other industries where they have data liquidity, where it's the data layer, the value is put in at that data layer where you can just interact with the data. If I'm in the real estate market, there is a pool of liquid data that we can interact with. And we use an MLS number mm -hmm. to attach to all of the listings. Healthcare, we can't, we can't expose, even if we had an MLS number, it's still not as secure, right? Like even if we took the pictures of the home out and we took the address out and it's just the square footage and all of that information, there still can be value derived from it, from the sale price. And now we're getting into the financial market where it's one pool of data that we have a bunch of user interfaces for, right? I got a mobile app with banking that is just accessing Ryan's data, but I can't sure. see everyone else's, but it's the same data. It's all in the same liquid state where it's independent of the applications. Why DataVant uh, exists is solving the, if you have all of this data, let's say we've put it into a liquid state and it's all in one place, how do you use it in an ethical, meaningful way when you can't expose patient health information, right? We, we, we still have HIPAA to, con to be concerned with people's privacy. And that's the hole that I see data vent filling. Since I first heard about what you do, I've been excited about it because the solutions exist and needed to exist as a dependency before innovation could occur in other industries as well. Yeah, so a, a number of uh, number of great points there. I, I would say first and foremost, we seek to make the data that is available more usable and more exchangeable to drive the usability of the data. Another analogy that I like to use a, a lot, Ryan, is when you think of data vant. Go back many, many years, and, and I'm aging myself here a little bit when I use this analogy, but go back to the AT&T days or the, the Bell, where their, their number one focus was taking and, and laying physical lines from one house to one house to one house to one business to another business and creating a network or nodes, if you will, where I can pick up the phone in Pennsylvania and call Ryan in Minnesota. And 
AT&T made that link possible and charged a very small toll, if you will, for allowing that communication to take place. The analogy is very, very similar in what Datavant is doing with healthcare data in that we have some 400 nodes, if you will, right now, everywhere from good quality organizations like where HealthJump is using our technology to bring together disparate EHR and EMR data to other large organizations that have large claim sets to very nuanced sets of data that may have very, very unique uh, small cell lung cancer diagnostic tests. And so all of these nodes on, on the ecosystem, we allow for that exchanging of information and taking the friction out of, if you will, using the analogy, the communication from one node to the other. With our merger with Psyox now, one of the things that we're doing is, is completely opening up the accessibility to large provider groups that are out there so that a year from now, the nodes will go from 400 to 500. And, and, and we keep building out that network so that you can get data from point A to point B or communicate from point A to point B in a highly compliant manner. And yes, we believe that the underpinning for that, as you pointed out, Ryan, is really has a, a, an awful lot to do with the advancements of, of clinical research. Right now, one of the fastest growing areas uh, for Datavant is in uh, the clinical trial area where uh, more and more life science companies, CRO organizations are using the Datavant token to place a neutral token on clinical trial patients for the primary purpose of aligning other data sets to answer good quality research questions, or even after a trial has been complete, to be able to go back and answer questions around potential adverse events, or even looking for new indications for a particular medication. I just realized it, but Datavan is like the fax machine. If you only have one fax machine, it's worthless but it's an exponential increase in value for each additional fax machine that's out in the world. If you're connecting all of these different data sets for each new data set, it has value to every other data set as one more diagnosis, one more treatment plan that could be used to save another life through research, improved physician learnings, you know, reducing costs of healthcare. I think it's a really interesting world for you to be living in. So thank you for sharing time about Datavant and the work that you're doing to make data more accessible to those that need to use it in a safe, compliant manner. And I wish you guys all the best of luck. Well, th thank you for your time, uh, Ryan. And, and I think uh, you've just given me another analogy with the, with the fax machine that I might be able to use. Um, uh, the, 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 the slight difference is I think we all realize that a lot of healthcare today is actually still practiced on the fax machine, which is uh, which seems crazy in this day and age. And and certainly our cutting edge technology, uh, our engineers might say, well, we're well advanced from the fax machine. But your analogy, I think, is spot on in that it's the connectivity among the various um, not only producers. But users of uh, of healthcare data that really that really drives our our broad uh, healthcare uh, data ecosystem network. So I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to our continued partnership with uh, with Health Jump. Thank you so much. Take care.